Yeah, welcome. Uh, this is the third lecture in the chapter on extremal problems. And uh, today we are going to talk about representations of orders with geometric objects, in particular with curves, and uh, also about colorings of cover graphs. And uh, it, it will turn out that these things are kind of related and we will have some, some uh, implications for the taxonomy of colorings. Uh, so implications of the, of the thing we, we discuss is that disjointness Bigrounded curves are perfect. So, what is a bigrounded curve? We think of uh, a strip and we ground each curve on each side of the strip. So we have a we have a collection of of curves, each of them uh, with one with one endpoint on the left and one endpoint on the right side. So this might be might be an example. Uh, this kind of class is is perfect. Um, and then a second one will be that if you look at the disjointness graphs of grounded curves. So a uh, grounded is not bi-grounded, it's just grounded on one side. Uh, this class of, of uh, graphs is not even so it turns out that in this class of graphs we have triangle free uh, graphs which have grammatic number going to infinity and uh, and this second result will be a corollary of of what we what we show in the other class of things we show that cover graphs and they are uh, triangle free by, by definition uh, with large chromatic number exists. And we will, we will uh, actually quantify how large the chromatic number is and see some surprisingly uh, high values, I would say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just as, a, as an additional remark, I want to point to one of the results we have today, one of the results we had uh, a week ago, and two things that we don't show in this, uh, in this lecture. Series. So if we look at segments, and there we can talk about intersection and disjointness, and look at the corresponding graphs. And now in this case, we know that there are triangle free with chromatic number going to infinity. And in this case, we have seen that the chromatic number is bounded by W to the 4. And uh, now we can also look at grounded curves and then we can look at intersection and disjointness and from, from what I said here we have triangle free examples with chi going to infinity and I already mentioned uh, 
that here this class is time bounded. So, so we see that in this class the uh, the intersection graphs are kind of more complex, and in this class the disjointness graphs are more complex. If you take this, at, at least at least it's it cannot be said that that. Um, it can go either way. Okay, um, so let's start with the with the first thing that we that we have there. This is a proposition which is a is a nice is a nice uh, observation. G a comparability graph. Equivalent to uh, G as a representation as this jointness graph of uh, bigrounded. So, for the proof, uh, let's look at this direction first. We have a we have a comparability graph. There is a poset behind, and uh, we can take a realizer. And now here is here is something we can do. We can take k vertical lines and uh, we associate them with the with the vector extensions. Uh, let's say uh, element x is here on this linear extension and here and here. Here and here, and now we interpolate the points, and we get a curve by grounded on the two extreme linear extensions. And uh, now, if we look at two uh, elements x and y, so if x is incomparable to y. The curves cross, and if x is comparable to y, then well, we can we can if x is less than y, then the curve of x is always below the curve of y, so they are disjoint. Yeah, so this is this is how from from a comparability graph you build a representation as the jointness graph of by grounded curves, and now the converse you have you have your your by grounded curves, and they can they can look. Uh, let's let's take simple curves. It can look wild, uh, but but still you can define you can define the region below. And now, if you have if you have disjoint curves, then the regions will uh, there will be some some inclusion relation on the regions. So. And this inclusion relation on the regions is transitive. So it's giving you a poset. And this is how you how you can do it. So in uh, inclusion uh, of regions it's a poset. This is, 
this is the, the proof of this uh, thing. And well, so the jointness graphs of bi-grounded curves are uh, comparability graphs, so they are perfect, and we have we have shown this. Um, okay, now the next one is is more involved. It's a related thing, but it's it's a bit more involved. It will take a bit more of a proof. So um, now we look at cover graphs. And uh, we want to find a geometric representation with curves or cover graphs. And uh, they have such a thing. They have uh, a representation as these jointness graph of curves uh, spanned in a cylinder. So instead of saying the, the curves we have here are uh, bi-grounded, you can also call it they are uh, curves span in a strip. Yeah, this is the same thing. Here is a here is a strip, and and now instead of spanning the curves in in a strip, meaning two vertical lines, we take a cylinder and. Uh, And now our curves live on the cylinder. So, and they have an endpoint on on either side. So this is the class of of graphs we are looking at. Yeah, um, and for for short. We, we are going to call such a, such a representation, we call it a cylinder representation. Okay. Um, Less 
equal i less than j less than equal j. So in the picture, if you if you have your R S in the graph and there is a pass, then you know that all these edges are in the graph as well. Like something like quarter. Yeah. Uh, Yes, something like chordal, but only for a very restricted class of cycles. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether this uh, leads some yeah. somewhere interesting. Okay, now uh, this is a definition, and if we we'll have a, if we have a poset, and then we we have the transitive. Uh, This is a transitive orientation of the comparability graph of P. So in some sense, it's just a poset, but now we look at it as a directed graph. Um, and then we have the, the transitive, uh, yeah. Let's call it. This is R E refers to reduction. Uh, this is a transitive reduction. This is the the uh, diagram orientation of the cover graph. So the cover graph with the na natural orientation coming from from G. And uh, here is the, the observation. Both of these graphs are weakly transitive. And the are weakly transitive. Yeah. And um, and what we are going to to do next is we interpolate between these two weakly transitive graphs. The claim is that uh, you can enumerate all the edges which are in in this one and not in this one. So we can take all the edges which are transitive, and we can define an ordering on these edges so that for every initial segment of this ordering, if we add the corresponding edges to the transitive reduction, then we get a graph which is weakly transitive. And uh, yeah, so this is what we what we do. We enumerate. transitive edges as E1 up to Em such that Di equals uh, the reduction plus um, E1 up to Ei is weakly transitive for all i from uh, 1 to n. So the dm would finally be the t dtr. Um, yeah, and, and just uh, how? Well, uh, define define a uh, poset on the edges by doing by doing the following. If you have a if you have a longer arc, so here would be it would be a pass. Then you say this is 
larger. And here, yeah, and take a linear extension of this of the corresponding uh, POSIC on the edges, and this will give the this enumeration. You can also. If there exists a pass with this property, then you can use it. You can also, if if you you can also do it. You you define the length, the length of an edge uh, is the is the length of longest pass. Uh, with with endpoints uh, the endpoints of E. So you take a longest pass, uh, which is so that this is a transitive edge for this pass. You get the length and you sort your uh, edges by length, and this gives you another trans uh, enumeration which which does a job. So. Uh, such a such a, an ordering of the edges exists, and we can now look at these at these graphs. And uh, yeah, so we claim a stronger result. We claim that each of these di's has a cylinder representation. Okay, so uh, 
what we do is we we use backward induction the case M is already done and now we assume assume that uh, this is true for Pi plus 1 and we let uh, Ei equals Rs. So we have a cylinder representation of Di plus 1. On the boundaries we see L and L prime and uh, the two curves are and S, they are an edge in this graph, so they are disjoint. And what we what we have to do is we have to make them crossing without uh, messing up the the other stuff. Okay, and uh, and we are going we are going to achieve this, but. Uh, this will, will need some preparatory work and we are going to, to discuss uh, an operation on digraphs which is a push down operation. So let's call it uh, digression. So um, we are looking at the digraph and we define a die cut in a digraph is a cut S bar S so uh, S is a subset of the vertices, S bar is a complement of S in the set of vertices, so you have a partition of the vertices, and the cut is a set of edges which uh, have one endpoint here and one endpoint there. And uh, such a cut is a die cut if all edges uh, is a cut such that all edges in the cut are oriented from S bar to S. Yeah. Um, and now if D is a, a digraph and uh, S bar S is a die cut, then we define the, the push down, D push down of S uh, is the digraph. by reverting all the edges. Of the die cut. Then so you take the edges and you flip them, you direct them from S to S bar. And uh, and here is a, a very easy observation. If D is acyclic, D is acyclic if and only if the push down of S and D is acyclic. Yeah, and. Uh, and why is this the case? So we have we have S bar, we have S. This is D, and uh, and all the edges have this direction. If there is a 
cycle in this digraph. It has to be either on this side or on that side. It cannot go across the cut. And, and this remains true if you revert the cut. So uh, this is a very easy thing. And now we are going to apply this uh, in, in the given situation. So uh, we consider di and we take as the s, we take the closed upset of s. Closed up set in P. It's a well defined subset, and uh, and now if we look at S bar S, this is a die cut in DI. And uh, we can we can look at the push down of this die cut. So if 
if it if it is in the if this is in the transitive closure, then in the generating digraph you have you have a corresponding directed path. And uh, and now we look at this pass maybe I I continue here Good. 
and uh, and now we are. I'm just wondering one question. So, uh, mm, so with, with this with this path going from S up to X J, X J down to X J plus one, and then up to R, and then there is this path from R to S, yeah, all directed in the same way. And, and no, 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 no. They're not. Uh, you have to. You have to see in. Of course. Of course, uh, the last one here also belongs to this cut. So in the push down, it is reverted. Ah, uh, okay. But uh, I thought there was a cycle, but no. No, 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 no. This is. So everything, everything you have here. Incident, you, you also have these, these edges because of the weak transitivity, and all these are in the cut. And, uh, it's it, the, the thing here it is that at each point of the discussion, you have to know are we talking about di, di plus one, or q? Uh, okay. Uh, we get we get the claim, and now we now we are ready for the for the construction. And because I can I can continue here again. So. Um, Recall that we have the we have the representation of di plus one with L and L prime on boundary. This is the L side, this is the L prime side and we're going to extend the L prime side. So uh, here is an L double prime and this is going to be L prime restricted to X minus closed upset of S and then we take the L prime restricted to the Upset of S, and uh, so this is the S bar, and this is S. But I, I think it's it may be good to to, uh, and this is the linear extension of P. We just I, I reuse the, the word we, we push this uh, upset up. In, in the linear extension. And now we take a triple prime and this is just L prime of U S L prime of X minus U S. So this is just a shift. So we we take this uh, suffix and push it in from the other side. And uh, this is a linear extension of Q. I mean, all the, all the relations you see here are, are preserved. And now we take uh, another one, L4, and, and here we are not we are not very specific. We take any any linear extension of Q with R comes before S. Yeah, and 
uh, and now from L prime we can go to L double prime. This is just two linear extensions, and if we interpolate linearly, say then uh, we we stay in the disjointness graph of the comparability graph of P. So we don't we don't uh, mess up and and get uh, get new crossings which shouldn't be there. And then this is just a shift of the uh, a rotation of the starting point on the on the cylinder. This is nothing. And then this is the move. So this is for free. And now this move to the L4. This is in the comparability graph of Q. And now go back to our observation. Every edge of di corresponds to a comparability of Q. So every edge of di remains disjoint when we go from L triple prime to L4. Yeah? Every edge remains disjoint. The curves corresponding to the edges remain disjoint. And this is, uh, but, but of course, R and S, they change position. Here we have S in the, in the first part. Actually, it is the first element of this linear extension. And now it gets behind R. So these two curves cross. Here R and S cross. Yes, and uh, now we now we want to get back to the uh, invariant, and this is this is for for free. We go back to L three, we go back to L two, we go back to L prime, and we have a representation representation of the i as uh, disjointness. Of curves on cylinder. Sinks, and you can look at the, 
the graph of all possibilities that you can do with this with this push down and this is a, an interesting object um, yeah but I'm going to clean clean the boards and then we we go and we continue with the discussion of chromatic number of diagrams. But I mean, uh, there, there should be a name for for the directed cover graph. So, so the diagram is by definition an object which comes with a drawing, which is an upward drawing. And and here we, of course, we we are not interested in these drawings, but we are interested in the orientation still. So and the cover graph completely forgets about the orientation. What do you call or you you're not interested in? But uh, in the proof, we are interested. Like here in the proof, we are we are we're not interested in the in the orientation. We we talk about uh, a representation of the cover graph with curves. But in the proof, the orientation is essential. And uh, as you will see in the in the proofs of where you where you look at colorings of cover graphs, it's always, it's always that you look at the underlying poset, it's always that you look at the orientation. Shift graphs, we know that shift graphs have uh, have this property, and um, yeah, this is also true for Berlin graphs and, and other things. Then um, a special class of triangle-free graphs are diagrams, and it was already studied by Bolobash in, in uh, the 70s. Uh, chromatic number of diagrams can go to infinity and it was a logarithmic thing construction. And then there was a construction of 
fusion energy drill, they, they strengthen the results and show that two-dimensional posets even have diagrams which have a large chromatic number, but there the bound is log star n. So it's really, really not very fast uh, going to infinity. And here, now, and, and then we saw from, in the, in the last uh, lecture, uh, Piotr showed us that uh, always, if you are in triangle free graphs, you have that the chromatic number is upper bounded by two square root of n. So, n to the one half. So it's, we're getting quite close. It's uh, surprising, surprisingly uh, large value. Good. And, and now we, we go into the proof and you will be surprised because here's what we, what we consider. P, a set of endpoints in the plane. denoting the incidences between the points in P and the lines in L uh, by ILP. This is the incidence. Now, uh, an assumption we are going to make is that the x-coordinates of all the points here are different. And the slopes of all the lines are different. And this can be achieved by a, by a, a fine transformation which keeps the uh, incidences and uh, makes these assumptions valid. So now we define a directed Graph on the incidences. So the incidences will be will be our vertices, and uh, here is a condition for edges. I first give you the picture, and then I give you the formal statement. Uh, so we have an incidence, a point P, a line L. And then we need a second incidence, a point P prime and a line L prime. Uh, and this is the picture, P prime and L prime. This is an edge. P prime. Uh, P prime. So, um, so sense, please. louder. Hmm? Louder. Ah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, every, every vertex in our graph, it's also a some point, yeah. Yeah, sure. It's a you have you have the plane, and with certain uh, configurations, in this case, incidences in this plane, you associate a vertex. I mean, okay. um, yeah. So what what do we see here? We have uh, we have P L P prime L prime and H if and only if. So the, the piece, the, the x coordinates, move to the right. The slopes uh, increase. And finally we have that, uh, that this p prime is on L. So this is an incidence in our set. Well, these are the three conditions. Okay, and uh, here is a first claim. This is this graph is a cyclic. Well, uh, here's how we can how we 
can prove this. Define a lambda total order on the incidences. And, uh, and how do we do it? We say that PL is less in lambda P prime L prime if uh, XP is less than XP prime or they are the same, XP equals XP prime, but, uh, but the slopes go in the increasing direction. And now, now we see that every every edge of our graph is a forward edge on this total order. So do we also require P prime to lie on L? Or no, here we do it on. You have a total order on all the incidences. Ah. All the incidences are totally ordered, and uh, and every edge. If we look at this at this total order. Every edge is going forward. Yeah. Really, already in the, the first condition makes it go forward. So there is no directed cycle. And um, and now this the next claim is that uh, this graph is transitively reduced doesn't have transitive edges. So it's an orientation of a diagram which corresponds to a posit, a cyclic orientation of a cover graph. So this is the second claim. Uh, maybe it's it's good to call it G. G is a cyclic. Uh, G is transitively reduced. Suppose. Actually, no, it's not. We can we can make it direct. We could just consider a sequence of edges. P1, L1, P2, L2, P3, L3, P3. Now, uh, apply a vertical shear to make L1 horizontal. So vertical shear means you, you take you take uh, the plane and then you you shear things vertically to make L1 horizontal and then here is our sequence of objects P2, L2, P3, L3 and so on. And, uh, and what we see is that the points P1 to PK are increasing in x and y coordinate.
cannot close uh, well moment moment we we are we we ask about a transitive edge we have no edge yeah pk is not in we would need pk and l1 to have to have the edge sorry this was now i was uh, i was on the wrong track so this would be a transitive edge and and this is not not here Okay, so this is our second claim. Um, so now we now we know that uh, the graph we have constructed is is a, is a covered graph with a with an acyclic orientation. Uh, and could our could these lines like exceed the vertical line because they are like they are moving in one direction like like reverse to the if you if you have a look at a line like this yeah, yeah, like this it. has a very very small slope a very very small slope okay so slopes are going you you orient your oh, lines so this is the like the first line here so this is l1 in some sense it would be l1 you just shrink I mean, it, it's simply it's simply impossible that you that you go across because then you don't have an edge. See, go okay. Look at the definition of the edge. This is not this is not an edge. If you uh, yeah sure. bend over. Okay, so uh, our goal now is to get a bound on on the chromatic number of this graph and in many cases it's uh, you, you don't look at the coloring you look at uh, the independent set so we want to define to find a bound on the size of the independent set in this graph So this 
would be uh, this is what corresponds to an edge of G. Okay. Um, and and now we we consider some J independent in G and we look at J as a set of edges in B of here. And uh, here is here is what we claim that looking at these edges, we can we can prove the following. We can prove that the J is not too big. It's at most as big as well, as P plus L. This is we claim this upper bound. And, uh, and for the proof, so um, we have this J as a set of edges in this bipartite graph. And the first thing we do is we uh, get rid of that many edges. So for each each L in L, uh, remove the incident edge to the leftmost point in P. Emphasis: We are only looking at the edges in J. Okay, so uh, we have this. Uh, removing this thing is transforming J into J prime. And now, uh, now we look at J prime. Uh, suppose that J prime is big, is more than, is bigger than the number of points. Then this tells us that some point is incident to two edges. This is the P incident to two at least edges in J prime. Strictly larger than P. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, now, let's have a look. Here is P. In, in J prime, we have two neighbors. We look at the left one and let it be L. Now L has an incident edge in J prime. So it had incident edges in J. So we got rid of one edge in J. And the other endpoint of this edge that we removed is to the left. So this is a removed. But now look at this configuration and compare it to the configuration up there. If we find two edges here and they are the 
with this configuration, so this is an edge in the graph. And this is a contradiction because we are assuming that J is an independent Z in G. So this was wrong. So J prime is at most P and uh, adding back the edges that we removed, we get at most P plus L. Good. So this is this is uh, the geometric part, and now now we have to shift some numbers to get our our result. Uh, maybe I like this one. So we have, have shown that the alpha is upper bounded by 2n. Now, uh, now we want to we want to find a bound of on the chromatic number in terms of the number of vertices. And the number of vertices of our graph is the number of incidences. And we, so far we didn't say anything about the number of incidences. So somehow we have to, we have to go back to this. And uh, here is a proposition There exists a set of points and a set of lines uh, with the same size and and theta of n to the four thirds incidences. So. Uh, there is a famous semi trotter theorem which talks about points and lines and incidences. It's giving an upper bound. It's giving an upper bound which is in our situation where P and L are of the same size is exactly an upper bound of this form. And, um, and what we show here is that the, the semi trotter theorem is essentially best possible. And uh, yeah, the, the construction is is very very simple. So we take as a set of points, we take these points of a grid. We take the points uh, x y with the property that the x is between a zero and n to the one third and the y is between 0 and n to the 2 thirds. So the number of points is the product is n. And for the lines, we take, we take lines of the form y equals ax plus b, and we take, uh, we take the same bounds. We allow a to go from zero to n to the one third and we allow b to go from zero to one n to the two third. And now here is an observation. If you look at the line L of this form y equals ax plus b and and you say that the A is at most one half of this, and the B is at most one half of that. 
then the, the last point you can you can reach when you plug in a point x in this range is still in this range. So for each x in the in the range that is allowed uh, for for the p, you get a corresponding y on the line. So. Uh, For all x0 in this range, the point L x0, y0 belongs to P. And so this is a this is an incident. And now how many how many incidences do we have? So at least uh, one half into the one third, one half into the two thirds. This is a number of lines we are looking at, and each of these lines co contributes at least into the one third uh, incidences, and so this is equal to one quarter of into the one over four, uh, three, four over three, <laughs> which is which is in the claim theta bound with a precise uh, constant, and, and of course you can you can play a bit and you can improve the constant, but we we are not uh, we are uh, that's not a point for us. So let's see. Now we know that we have at which points and lines we, we want to look. At, a, at such a rich, a rich pair with many incidences. And so, uh, so we, the n, the number of it, you know, of vertices of our graph will be will be let's say approximately this one one quarter into the forces and now we we can express n in terms of small n let's say it's c times n to the Three quarters, and actually the c, the c is a is a nice number, nothing, nothing bad. And now, now we have alpha is less than two n, so it is. This is approximately well, two uh, c and to the three over four, and given given this bound on on alpha we can see that the chromatic number is at least as large as n divided by this bound on alpha. And, uh, and this is now 1 over 2c and to the reasonable constant and the exponent we were claiming. Yeah, so this is this construction which appeared uh, in January this year in a paper by, by uh, Andrew Suk and uh, Tom Mann. Yeah, so from from here, and this is something that I said I already, yeah. This is a, a construction of a cover graph with large chromatic number. But now you can, of course, uh, ask for cover graphs when you restrict the class of posets. When you, for example, uh, want that the poset is a, 
is an interval order. And uh, in, in that case, in that case, uh, a very precise result is known. So, uh, special classes, P interval order, and DP, the cover graph, and it's known that the chromatic number of DP is upper bounded by uh, the logarithm base 2 of the height of the poset plus 2. And this is, uh, if you look at worst case, then this is uh, essentially tied uh, up to up to this constant, which could be plus 1. Um, and, yeah, if P is a two-dimensional yeah, and, and this again gives give you posets where uh, give you graphs which are trimal free and where the chromatic number is going to infinity and for two-dimensional I already mentioned that uh, there was a paper by Christian Neshitril which shows that uh, you can go as fast as block star and uh, a recent paper with a randomized construction shows that here you can you can substantially improve to something like uh, let me let me try to recall I think it was something like this, log n over log square of log n uh, with, some, with some constant, which is, which is a, a nice improvement. Yes, uh, that's it for today. Thank you.